Welcome to the basic search for the Revit API. I want to introduce you to a tool that's very helpful called Revit Lookup for searching anything and everything that you want in the Revit API. The idea is to take an item and look it up and this tool allows you to see everything that's available in the API. It's also helpful if you're just kind of uh, wanting to know what what and where it's got tons and tons of information it also tells you the API name um, what the value is and all sorts of wonderful parameters um, and it's available for download um, so let's begin coding so if you have reusable code it's really beneficial to put it into a method that way if you need to use it again, you can use it over and over again. Um, and to begin with, I've set mine to public, which means that it's allowed to be seen outside my, my program. Um, and I want to return myself a level. And the name of my method is called get levels. And I'm going to send in the document that I'm using at the moment. Um, the Revit API allows me to look for, through a, a collector, a fill filter element collector and I'll call it collector and I will get a collection of elements sent back of levels and I'll use my collector which is part of the Revit API and I'll look for a class which is a type of level and I will send it to an L element. The next basic part is I will create an empty shell or not really a shell, I'll be create an empty empty list of levels. And then I'll iterate over my collection. So for each level in my collection, um, I will need to add it to my, my list of levels that I want to return to myself. So for each level in the list, I will add that level to my list and then return the list of levels back to myself. So quick maintenance, got a bunch of red squiggly lines, forgot to send to the document. I like to add this just to clarify that this is a, my method and the level, I need to add a single level into my list and return it back to myself. We'll do this one more time. Uh, exact same code to look for the floors and I will try my best to walk you through this one a little bit more clear and maybe the second time around you'll see how it goes. So I got my public, the list that I want to return, the name and the document which I'm sending in. I got the filter element collector which is part of the Revit API. I got my collection of elements at the Witcher walls and you are Witcher floors you can name these anything you want but right now we're looking for floors um, and the type I'm looking for a type of floor and I'm gonna send it back as an element um, and I'm gonna create my empty list to return to myself and then I'm gonna loop over my collection so for every floor I'm gonna name my floor case floor in the list of floors of the collection, I'm going to add it to my empty list, name list of floors, and then I'm going to return it to myself. And I always like to add this little bit to show that it's a piece of a method or a new method that I've just generated. So one more time, and I've sped this one up to get all the walls, it's the same 
code, but it's helpful to see that you can get floors, levels, and walls using this simple piece of code and that you can reuse this so you can put this in somewhere and, and continue to, to use this over and over again. Now to the main program. We cut and paste a piece of code which we've generated over and over again in previous videos which is basically getting the document and, and, and the application and we generate a list of levels and here's where we use our our method we get the floor and we send in our document from our program and we do it once more we get the list of, of floors and we'll create our empty list of floors here and we'll get our method of floors and we'll get our list of walls which are empty and we'll send in our method which will get our we'll get our walls and send it to the document so this for each loop will iterate over um, our levels list and we've already seen this in the past a uh, little bit of code and it will look in the list of levels and get each one of the levels and if the statement equals the level which we're comparing it to and that's what the double equals is for it compares it and if it matches the level um, it will execute this piece of code and you can have um, anything in there to match. It could be the name of your top of steel, it could be the ID, the element ID, um, and then it'll execute this. The very next piece of code is actually a very powerful and it's called link and it's a query system to search through um, your, 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 your list and it's part of the .NET, .NET framework and you're gonna see it written all over the place so I thought I'd introduce it here in a very simplistic way. So we're looking for a floor and we're gonna say floor.find and the X is actually our floor so we're saying floor.name equals uh, double equal is what we're looking for. So same with the wall. We'll say we're, we want to back a wall and we're sending in the list of walls and we'll say find. Now X is now equal to our wall. That's what the equal and the less than is. We're sending in our wall as X. So wall.name, which is x.name, compared to or equal to um, whatever we're looking for. And this could be an ID um, or anything that you're searching for, and it'll send it back. So if you want to see this play out in action, and you can actually see quite how powerful this is, is we'll get our solid fill um, from the fill regions um, to to this and what we'll do is use our fill filter element collector we'll send in our document a class type of and we've seen this already in the previous ones um, and we'll say where the fi fill element collector um, is Q and is equal or is, is send it to an X. Uh, is sent, we're sending it to a Q this time. Where Q um, dot name equals and I'm looking for the solid fill and this is part of your fill regions um, and we'll get the first one that it finds. Now this piece of code seems very long, very complex, but you'll see it over and over again in samples. So here's, here's a little cleanup of the code and maybe this will make it not so intimidating. We'll hit an enter there for, for of class and we'll look in for the class and where, where it is. Um, and here's our actual link part of it um, so 
So although it looks very long, it can kind of we can hit returns on it and you can see kind of the breakpoints of it. Um, there are actually different commands within the command. Um, so the next thing we want to do is now that we got our our solid fill, we're going to override our our graphics. And this is always helpful if you're searching for something and you just have thousands and thousands of elements. And you just want to change the color, right? You want to send um, everything that 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 didn't match your query to a solid red of some sort. So we're going to override the graphics. So we'll set the solid fill color um, to a new new color here, and and we'll we'll set it to red, which is two hundred fifty five zero zero zero. And now the solid color black, or the solid the the solid fill, um, not black, but it's going to be red will will come in handy cuz we'll we'll get the solid fill ID uh and we'll send it back to our our override graphics um so we'll start our transaction in the safe mode uh and send in our document and we'll label it something um and I'll start my transaction here and I will set my override for my floor ID and I will override the color uh, to the ones that I found. So what I was querying with my link um, I will override that color and the same with the uh, walls so and then I'll commit to it um, and the very last thing I like to do in order to keep Revit from uh, giving somebody the really terrifying uh, error message is I'll try it and catch it so uh, this will kind of give you a safety net so I'm doing a couple of things in in the code I'm looking for a level ID and then I'm querying two two things. I'm querying the uh, floor and I'm querying the wall and I'm setting their their solid I'm setting the solid color to um, red as an override in the view. Um, so here's the wall IDs or the floor IDs um, wall IDs and I will look for my add-in and I will run it um, and test it to see if it, it, it finds my uh, level ID and sets my uh, colors. All right, that's it. Thank you for watching.